Welcome to Curl Up with Kathy Bramley. I've got another wonderful guest joining me in the treehouse today. Um, it's somebody that I always, always have a massive laugh with, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. I'm delighted to introduce and welcome to Curl Up with Kathy, Sue Watson. Good morning, Sue Watson. About to appear on my screen. Hello. No, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? You look fabulous. I'm great. Well, I thought, you know, as, as I'm going to be meeting the public, I put my lippy on and I haven't done that for a month and I couldn't find my makeup. So I've had to use my daughter's makeup bag. Sorry, Eve. And um, <laughs> so it's a nice bright lipstick, but it's fine. We, you know, similar it's, colouring. It's so, yeah. So I, I sort of got myself all dressed up for the first time in at least a month. Oh, well, I'm Facially I'm anyway. Honest. I'm yeah, well, it. you wouldn't want to see what goes below the face. Trust me, that this is this is all you need to see. Just don't get the camera any lower. Well, Bye. to be honest, Sue, as you well know, I've seen it all before. <laughs> you, unfortunately, yes, we have no secrets. Sadly. I've seen a lot of Sue uh, over the Too years. Much. <laughs> because I'll qualify that we've been on some spa days, haven't we? We have. We've been on. We a were forced of spa days. forced to go on spa days. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I seem to remember, I, I sent you a message and said, would you like to go on a spa day? And you didn't reply for ages. And you were like, oh, no. uh, but now I, persu I persuaded you, didn't I? And you really enjoyed yeah. it. But the thing is, it's just me and technology. I probably just didn't see your message, as I said at the time. <laughs> you know, just, no, I seem, to, I, seem, I seem to remember you were worried that you were going to have to wear lycra and do loads of oh, exercise. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, I do that all the time anyway, and I just wanted to rest, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, if she wants me to wear a thong, then, you know, it, things could be limited here. So, yeah. but, yeah, we, we, we were, it was great. I didn't actually get out of my toweling robe all day. No, I just, you didn't. Basically, so that was... <laughs> That was perfect. <laughs> and all I all I had to do was wander, waddle, I think is the word, waddle to lunch. And it's my perfect well, day, really. If you remember, I persuaded you to book onto yoga. And then during the day, you persuaded me to cancel. <laughs> I'm a bad influence. I did. <laughs> we went to the, so we went and, we went and um, got a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> with, our, with the schedule of the day to decide what we were going to do. And we just ordered two coffees and then went for lunch. <laughs> I think we did coffee instead of yoga as well. Yeah, I, mean, I much we prefer did. coffee instead think, of yoga. Yeah. Coffee instead of any exercise, really. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, no, it's great. And then the other time we we we, we were just talking about briefly before when we um we went to our we, we share an agent. We do, yeah. Um, the lovely Hannah Ferguson, and we went to a party of the agency, and <laughs> um, you and I probably drank far too many sparkling waters. We, do you remember? And, we were the first to arrive, pretty much. And the last to leave. And the last to leave. <laughs> In fact, they were piling chairs on the tables as we were sat there still talking. Well, we were actually leaning against the chairs, I think. Yeah. And then we we were both, well, I particularly was hungry, and dragged you along. And we ended up in the underbelly of London. Would you remember the shoes business? <laughs> no, what was that? <laughs> Your shoes were hurting you. <laughs> And then, so we had to go back to the hotel. I'd only got like full on boots, so I couldn't change my party shoes. So I had to go out in my party shoes and every step was like, ah, oh, did you manage to change your shoes? <laughs> but we had bedrooms next door to each other. And you went, you said, I won't be a minute. And you went and changed your shoes and you fell off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> it was the wine i'm sure it was spiked yeah and it was... um yeah, it must have been it wasn't us but what i was thinking about this the other day and what we did was we wandered as i say around the underbelly of london and we finally found some of them in our drunken stupors you know two middle-aged mums we found this place that we thought looked like a little restaurant <laughs> and we went upstairs to it and we sat down and we ordered and we had a few drinks and it was only the next day we realized that we were actually the oldest in there and actually probably the only people not taking drugs. Yeah. <laughs> and we ordered like, um, we wanted something like chicken and chips. We, we, we thought we were in Nando's, didn't we? But... Yeah, we, we tried to order these chicken wraps and then and we ordered side orders of fries and with a glass of wine each. Yeah. Some bizarre, like for, after midnight. And, and she Again, said, like what size? Two middle-aged mums. And we said, large. <laughs> <laughs> and then the food came and they never did bring the fries, you remember? No, they didn't. I, I, well, it still hurts today, that, yeah, for me. Still, I, I won't forget that. 
no. yeah but it was so funny and then we got grand plans to go for breakfast the next morning hadn't we but we had such bad hangovers <laughs> We ended up staggering to the station and just lying in Costa, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> On our cases. <laughs> yeah. We must anyway, do it again. Good times. We must do it again. Yeah. Good times. That was that was great fun. And then we we sat next to each other in Beaudley, didn't we? We went to yeah, the literary Beaudley, festival. Yeah, the literary festival there, which was lovely. It was great. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. yeah. And um, I can't remember who did we see? It was Katie Ford Katie and Joe Ford. Thomas. That's right. Oh, they were great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was lovely. Yeah. And and I was writing Chicklet at the time, so it was really kind of like, as as all of us still do, really looking up to Katie Ford as this kind of goddess of of uh, female fiction. I mean, she yeah. was fantastic, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. She was really great. And yeah. I got her to a ded. I wrote. I bought books to give to friends, and um, yeah. I got her to dedicate my book to um, to the Bricklicker, who's a, that's the nickname of one of my good friends. And yeah. she didn't bat an eyelid. She said to the Bricklicker. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even ask yeah okay yeah uh so yeah i love katie ford, love yeah, katie ford. Lovely. But, yeah yeah so you were at the time we we met you were originally writing rom-coms weren't you yeah yeah, yeah you've, um, you've got you've gone over to the dark side haven't you i have about 18 months ago i'd written i'd written 11 i was work, trying to work this out i'd written 11 books all rom-coms really and you know, I just, I got to the stage where I was really, I loved doing them, but I just wanted a challenge. I wanted to do something a little bit different. And um, I read thrillers. I've always read thrillers. Uh, I don't really read an awful lot of chick lit and rom-com and I don't, I don't read an awful lot of rom-coms. So I thought I'll have a go. And I'm with Book Couture um, publisher and they, they were really, really good actually. And I sort of said, look, this is what I really want to do. And they said, okay, we'll have a go then. Um, and my editor was great, and I wrote a, a, a first draft, and it just seemed to flow. It seemed to work, and it and it was easier than I thought it was going. No, sounds. But I think one thing my husband said was, "You've read so many thrillers over the years. It, it must have been itching to come out all these all this time. And that first one was just it. it I, I wrote it really easily. I mean, after that, it, it's harder. But you, I always think your first book of a genre can be quite easy because. All your ideas go into it and all your thoughts and all your plans and it kind of speaks to you. But after that, it gets a bit harder, I think. You know, that's that's my yeah, I've never yeah. I've never been tempted to write in another genre. But what Have you strikes not? no, what strikes me is like the first major stumbling block for me would be like I would open a scene, you know, open chapter one and yeah. All, re all my natural sort of light-hearted humour would want to come out. And you're very yeah. similar. I mean, we both yeah. share a sense of humour, don't we? We um, do. Um, how did you rein that? Or were you? did you have to be aware of reining it in? Or how did it work? Yeah, it's, to be honest, it's really funny you say that. Because even in the, my most recent book, which I've, which is out next week, that uh, The Sister-in-Law. Oh, let's show my, that one to everyone. My... Yeah, yeah, the sister. That's out on Thursday. Even in that one, um, which is like my fourth thriller now, and I'm well into the sort of the way it works, and I feel very much, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Sort of entrenched, really, in the in the in a good way in the thriller genre. I don't feel uh, like I'm slipping over, and yet my editor will say this is a little bit too comedic. You know, you, you this line you've written here is too funny. You can't have that in a thriller. Yeah. So it, it's. And she's right. She's absolutely right. It takes the tension away because suddenly it's, you're laughing. So mm. it is hard. And I think your natural voice, it, you know, does come through. Um, in my first thriller, um, Our Little Lies, one or two people have said to me, oh, I can tell it's your humour. And I wasn't even aware there was a lot of humour in that because mm. it's very dark. But it's dark humour, and I suppose mm. there's that. So, no, in answer to your question, it, it isn't easy. And I do miss it. I do miss the humour. I have to say, mm -hmm. I, I'm tempted sometimes to put things in, but I think no, you know. So I know what you're saying. You know, when when that's your thing, you kind of mm. it's, it's it's part of who you are, isn't it? Really? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. very much so for me. Yeah. Yeah. Do first you find time, that? First time I ever wrote a book, I had no idea about. I didn't think about genre. I just was thinking story. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I started writing something quite dark and serious oh and, really yeah and it just didn't work for me at all um i just it, i just i i knew i knew i needed to do something more light-hearted so that's how it where i ended up but now knowing 
how writing works and the process. I I could probably do it, but I, yeah. I don't have any inclination at the moment. I'm still. Yeah, I think uh, I think writing got... a book is writing a book, and I think if you as you you've written many and you're an experienced writer, you could probably turn your hand to most genres as I think probably a lot of writers could but it's whether you want to really and if you don't feel that mm. then you won't enjoy it and mm. I think that's part of it isn't it really mm. um and let's, I c- let's sorry, talk about this sorry let's talk about the sister-in-law can you tell us what the um, premise is yes it's um it was inspired by um and in fact I, I sent my editor a picture of Meghan Markle and Kate um Cambridge and she and they were both sort of looking at each other in a rather dodgy way and I just thought you know isn't it amazing how one person can come into a family and I mean it's not necessarily anybody's fault it's just the way the dynamics are so different and they can almost come from another world really because Meghan Markle in a way comes from a, another world yeah. and has joined the royal family and caused all these you know dramas really and who's right and who's wrong who knows what really goes on but I just thought that that's a royal family but that happens in every family and what do you do when somebody comes into that your family and they are married into your family so they're now relative they're now a relative and it's not like you know you you, you might meet somebody and think well I, I like that person but I don't want them to be my friend but when they're married into your family you have no choice and you're with them for life so mm-hmm. and what if that person you bothers you and you perhaps don't trust them and you're not sure what their motives are you know again if it's a friend you can sort of say i won't see that person anymore but you have no choice when they're family so it was it was the idea of you know somebody becoming an in-law and joining the family and all the dynamics are changed immediately and how that affects everybody really but mm. particularly in the sister-in-law it's about claire who's a hard-working nurse and mum to three and all she really wants is a happy family and a happy extended family and they go on this fabulous holiday the extended family to a villa in the in 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 Amalfi on the coast and it's everything's perfect about it and she finally feels she's finally sorting any little problems she's had in her marriage out and this is going to be a wonderful fortnight and then the sister-in-law arrives and everything changes and she's never met the sister-in-law before it's a new perfectly absolutely new person and it's how that completely throws the holiday and it really is a, becomes a holiday in hell and and the thing is the irony is when I wrote it last year I was thinking I really want to write a book set somewhere beautiful you know just because it's a thriller doesn't mean it can't be beautiful a little bit of my chick lit past coming in so I thought I'll set it on the Amalfi coast just above Positano whitewashed villa you know, blue skies. Yeah, you know, and I thought people will read this on their sun lounges on the beach, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're going to be on our sun lounges in the garden on with this one. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. but, you know, it, I, I think I did think at first, oh, God, you know, have I written the wrong book for the wrong year? But so far, the reviewers seem to like it and quite appreciate the escape, really. You know, well, so. stories are stories, aren't they? And it, yeah. You know, and everybody wants good stories no matter what they're doing and and, and we're reading more um you know even my kids are reading more and they don't read yeah. normally yeah so, yeah. <laughs> yeah um so i think just good we want good fiction and we want to be entertained and this premise does sound absolutely amazing so i'm going to uh going to download that it's out on thursday 30th it of is, yeah. april brilliant yeah. okay yeah. okay yeah. so we're going to celebrate in lockdown and the thing is again it's it's nicer in a way for me because normally I'm on it's a weekday my publication day I'm on my own my friends my, my two sort of best friends always have a Wednesday off and my publication day is always on a Thursday so <laughs> we always have the day before but on the actual day I'm usually on my own and people go oh I bet you're celebrating I have to wait till <laughs> Nick gets home from work or you know <laughs> yeah if he's now my daughter, but she's away, she's at uni. So, you know, I've been completely on my own. So it'll be really nice. It'll be the three of us um on Thursday and we'll Ooh. we'll have a bottle of champagne, I think, and, yeah. and it'll be a proper celebration, really. Yeah, know. that's so, nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think you do have to um make the most of little moments, don't you? And just um, you know, don't let stuff go by just because we're in lockdown. And yeah. at the end of the day, we're very lucky in lockdown because we're not on the front line and you know, we haven't got to be out there. So you do have Absolutely. to make the most of this time 
Um, yeah, I mean, you can't complain because, as you say, there are people out there working so hard and there are people, obviously, who are suffering and people who are grieving. And, you know, I mean, you know, while while everything's OK, you just have to say, well, we're doing we're doing what we should be doing. And I mean, I'm asthmatic, so I'm trying to be extra careful, really, you know, because I'm sort of seen as having an underlying condition. But, mm. um, you know, as long as you stay in and stay home, it seems to be the yeah. thing to do, doesn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. Mm. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I've always been really intrigued about your previous career before you started writing. Um, you you were a journalist, weren't you? To sort of you yeah, as a journalist. So go back. What what was your, your what was your university degree? Remind me. English. It was English. I did English. Yeah. And then um, you went and did your journalism qualification. Is that right? Yeah, I went to Sheffield to do a year in journalism, sort of postgrad in journalism, uh, which is actually where I met my husband. Um, and then we sort of lost touch for a while. I went to London um, and we were just friends. And I went to London and ended up working for my sh shame on The Sun, um, doing the TV um, celebrity stuff, which was great. And I worked with like Matthew Wright and um, Piers Morgan was on the same desk as me at the time. It was quite a, an interesting time. I mean, of course, at the time it didn't. I didn't. Piers Morgan meant nothing. He was just yeah. he was editor of Bazaar then or something. And but what? But the, the irony was, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to write real stories. And in in those days, um, you, you, there weren't a lot of celebrity stories. It was real people. So it's like triumph over tragedy stories. You know, mm. people who'd overcome terrible things. And um, and that was what I really wanted to do. So I I basically eventually managed to get for me which was sort of a dream job on woman's own and I worked there as a freelancer for on and off for, for a year or so but by then I'd got really friendly with my husband <laughs> and he was in the Midlands and he worked on newspapers in the Midlands and he he, he then got a job at the BBC and I, I decided to leave and we got married and I ended up in the Midlands and um, a friend of mine told me about a job going at the BBC and I ended up at the BBC at Pebble Mill, the old Pebble Mill, mm -hmm. and had a wonderful sort of 15 years there. I, I, I think it was about, and I left um, probably just after about my second book came out, I, I left because I, I realised I could probably cope. And um, it was a fantastic time. I was the, editor, uh, the um, producer and director of Points of View with Terry Wogan. And oh, wow. Yeah, I worked with oh, I worked with Nadia Sawala, lots of daytime stuff I did because I liked all that. Sophie Grigson, the chef, Ainsley oh, yeah. Harriet worked on cookery programs. Um, and what what gets me now is you know in those days again as a producer you wouldn't really ask um, anybody for a photograph to, to you know while you're working with them it wouldn't really be seen professional. But now because we have phones on our cameras, cameras on our phones all the time. You, you know, I'd, I'd have loads and loads of pictures, but I don't have much from mm. those days, you know, and mm. I think sometimes what a shame I've got the memories, but I've not I've not got photographs and things, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, but we did have we had a wonderful uh, the BBC was a fantastic place to work. And my husband's still there um, and um, he's but he's more news and, you know, um, we're quite different, really. And he always says, you know, it's like Panorama meets Absolutely Fabulous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't quite get me sometimes and I don't quite get him. But we're still together for 25 years. So it, it's, we're obviously somewhere along the way. We must quite like each other, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I remember you went <laughs> off on holiday last year, didn't you, to Canada? And yeah. You bumped into somebody that... Your your claim to fame here. Shall, shall I bring them up? Shall oh yes, bring them up. Yeah, if if anybody remembers them really, because they're they're actually huge in Canada now. Um, but I worked initially with them. I was the first person to work with them. Really, I, I sort of uh, we I was working on a program called Real this is, Room. This is Colin and Justin. Yeah, Colin and Justin. Yeah, the, the interior designers. Yeah. And I was working on a program called Real Rooms, which was a daytime makeover program, and it was on the BBC. And um, I rang, I rang around to try and find some presenters. We needed some, we need a presenter. And I, I contacted, I think it was Living Etc. And they said, well, we, we don't have one person, but we do have two and we call them the boys and we love them. And, you know, they'd make great presenters. And so I phoned them and well, the rest is history really, because they then did real rooms and they went on to do the million pound property experiment, which I worked yeah. on initially. Um, I worked on the idea. I had um, the book for that. Yeah, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Was it something you're interested in? That yeah, in... we did a bit of property development. We were oh, all right. into the Sarah Beanie programs and all of that. We watched it them was, all. It was huge then, wasn't yeah. it? It was yeah. really big. Yeah. Yeah. 
and they they are really talented really talented and so now they've, they've moved to Canada and they're absolutely huge in Canada and they've got this amazing apartment which overlooks the Rogers Centre which is the baseball and next to the CN Tower and my husband's really into baseball so he was just beside himself so I dragged him along and um to Canada and um when we were we were there we were sitting in in the in the baseball stadium and they contacted us and said we've just seen on Facebook that you're in Canada why are you not coming to see us well I didn't know where they were because they've also got um a, a sort of cottage out in uh, uh, the countryside in a place I think it's called Long Island in Canada and they do um a program called Cabin Fever where they do cabins and they, they've got this new program um out now where they're actually doing over a beautiful sort of country retreat um so anyway we went there to see them to their to their I see your doggies joined you yeah um oh <laughs> hello <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, and we went to see them and we we went out for dinner with them and we just had the best time ever and you know Nick absolutely loved them and they 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 put a message on Facebook and said um you know we saw Sue and her awesome hubs and now Nick's known as awesome, the awesome hubs. Yeah. <laughs> he loved that. He loved being called the yeah. awesome hub. So yeah. we, had, we had a great night and it was just brilliant. And, and the memories, you know, of starting up a programme from the beginning and, you know, the, all the problems and all the, the fun you have, you know, it's, it, it was a very special time really at the BBC. Yeah. There was, yeah. you know, I did a lot of starting, start set up a lot of programmes from the beginning as a, as a producer and assistant producer. And it was great fun. And, you know, you met all these mm. people on the way up really. And, you know, mm. it, was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so that was Canada last year, and we were hoping to go again this year and perhaps go to a different part. But, of course, that's not going to happen. But we did fall in love with Canada. It was it was amazing, you know. Yeah. And I'd like to set a book there, you know, mm. at some point. I really would. Yeah. Um, but who knows yeah. whether we'll ever get out again, out of yeah. the house again. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody, I, I'm... Um... I'm really excited about the sister in law. I'm going to tell everybody to go out and buy it and I'm going Thank to get you. it downloaded to my Kindle and Thank start you. reading it as soon as I can because it sounds really good. Because the last one that you did, I think it was the last one, I was too scared to. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it and then I realized what the, what the I'm not going to talk about it now. It, well, I'll, it was about um, a student, wasn't it? Somebody that's yeah, the empty nest. And, yeah, the empty nest, and it was, and it's yeah. basically based on my fears, my irrational fears, when my daughter went away to university, and it was like every everything you dread, really. But, but you know, it's um, it, it did quite well, so I think people liked it if you can use that word. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was pretty traumatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got my youngest starting university in September, and my yeah. oldest going into first year. I mean, third year. So um, no. I'm going to give it a miss for a couple. Of wait years. until they wait until they're both clear of university, and I, I could only write it when Eve was in a third year, and I knew yeah. she was on her way to, to leaving. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Wait till they've gone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen, Sue. Lovely to talk to you. Best lovely to see you. And. Yeah. and yeah, and let's hope we can perhaps troll the underbelly of London again sometime. <laughs> yes. <but let's laughs> and find that drugs time. den, that drugs <laughs> den that serves chicken wraps. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't there, a, there was a pub as well that we thought was a really funny name, so we took pictures of that. Do you remember? Oh, we did. I yeah, can't remember, what, I can't remember what it's called. But it was probably not funny at all. But probably not. I think everything was funny that night, but the next day it wasn't that funny, <laughs> was your it? Feet. Your feet were very funny. <laughs> that was very... They anyway, always are. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. Thanks Lovely to see me. you, darling. Take see care. you soon. Bye. 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 Kisses from me and Pearl. Bye. Bye, Pearl. Bye. <laughs> oh, Sue Watson there. And as you can see, Pearl joined me. She's very hot, as you can see. She's panting away there. Thanks so much for joining me. And I'll be back very soon with more of your favourite authors. Bye for now.